Wednesday, fresh off of our live workout. I think it was enough, so I'm adding a little bit more. It's gone crazy, but hey, I get to my results. So wanted to share what I was gonna do to finish up that said workout. This will be a long duration workout. I may chop this up and put edits, but yeah. This is essentially what we're gonna do. I had to do a little bit more upper body stuff. I'm just gonna throw it in here and blend it in just to finish. That said workout, got a lot of leg, got a lot of rotation, you know, athletic stuff previously, but I wanted to finish my workout. Tomorrow may be a very busy day, may not have time to work out. So, here's what I'm going to propose, here's what I'm going to work with. I got myself a kettlebell, a 40 pound kettlebell, pretty heavy. This will be a little bit of leg, shoulder, and core all in one here. Hoist this bad boy up. We're going to start to kneel as we kneel, start to push this up, bring it back to about half. We're going to drive through, finish the drive. Remember when earning this set position, it's all about control, all the way to down the back, all this is in. Same idea, step back down, press, and come back through, drive and hold. We need a lot of repetition, we're talking anywhere between five and seven per side. So, again. Press, come through, oh boy, feeling this bad boy, now I side. How we get the results, folks, we push. Feeling it, here we go. I'm getting a lot of arm activation, shoulder activation, core activation. Great exercise. Here we go, last one. You can do it. Excellent. All right, next one we're going to do jumping, switching, roll with that said heavy kettlebell. What I was here in a split stance. Remember, I'm going to control my position, so shoulder blades are down and back. I have my knees out after tight. When I hinge, I'm going to pull, immediately commit to the other side, land it, stick it, then roll again. Land it, stick it, roll again. And work a little bit of cardio here, a little bit of core activation. Remember when I'm rowing, I'm pulling towards the waist, everything's flat and controlled, I'm not letting everything go. So you need to stay there nice and tight. As you can see, the back foot doesn't rest. That's where I get that core and leg activation. Do do more here. Last one. Excellent. Oh, we got this band here. Round up some shoulder work. Keep this one rather simple because we did dynamic stuff earlier. I'm gonna stand on this bad boy. I'm going to go both feet to make it more tension. You want a little bit less tension. Of course, one foot's ideal for less tension. Pelvis is in. Shoulder raises down and back. It's going to do a side raise and a front raise. I'm just working on keeping the organization of my body consistent. If you can notice, it's more of a full body experience. No real isolation per se. Global fitness requires global training. So we're adding some shoulders, some arms, some back, some chest, all in one here. So we're burning the most calories. We stay lean, strong, relevant, and big deal about that is we have endurance that way. Okay. So I got these dial weights. So we're on some of those exercises too. Here, I'm straight up. Front shoulder stuff. Okay, 
everything else coming down slowly, decelerating, working our back muscles, working that eccentric loading sequence, so mastering that pelvis position. We do it rather slow and keep flowing. So if I was here, I go up, drive around, finish to the outside, building back, shoulders, strength, and dexterity. These are really difficult, so I'm not going to need a lot of repetition. But I'm going to do three more. My back as flat as possible. Try not to let your rib cage rip or bend up too far. I'm going to try and stack it. Last one for me. Excellent. And then is the reverse arm. Bring this back down here. I just check this next exercise. Next one I like to do. Sitting in between your chest. We're also going to add some core strength. Typically, some hip extension strength. This stops us from being that concave position where even when we're creating push patterns, not getting any growth in the chest or actual activation. If you ever notice, pull your shoulder blades down and back, you create extension, you get a lot more chest activation. Not only that, you keep the shoulder girdle and the shoulder joints and all those connective muscles very strong, endured, and safe. So, in order to promote that, a great exercise that we can do instead of just doing a press structure is I create hip extension. Now that hip extension position, now I'm really recruiting my shoulder blades down and back, hip extension earns pelvis positioning, and from here I can do an overhead pull where I'm working a little bit of back and chest and shoulders all in one, a press, and then a fly. And the whole time, I'm going to keep my hips up to engage those principles we just talked about. Now, when pulling the weight over, it's imperative you pull past the chest. And remember to always pin your shoulder blades down and back. Because even this exercise, the first one there is a pullover. You may see out of this view here, can be very sketchy in the shoulders. If you don't promote that shoulder blade retraction, and you want to keep your chest engage throughout. So remember to keep that back. Pull over again. Do a press. Do a fly. All three times is one. So what we're going to do set five to seven. I'm going pretty heavy here. So this will probably be enough after this one here. We can get the most out of our chest workouts if we're still working out at home, of course. Because I don't know about you guys, but working out with restrictions doesn't sound like fun. Okay, that's what they're allowing us to do now. It's better than nothing, but of course, if you've already adapted or pivoted towards working out at home, might as well keep doing it. Work out to the best of your ability without restrictions. Last one we're going to do is set you guys back up high here. That should be a good circuit to finish off today. This is a curl complex, an arm curl complex. Actually, I'm cranking these down a little bit later. It's pretty heavy. We got a 30. Bring it down a bit. in the wrist. Okay. Gonna build more outside presence or outside profiling of the bicep and include or improve grip strength from that set position. Now I'm gonna hinge, turning it into a hammer curl almost like a kettlebell swing. Then I'm gonna proceed to gain a hip hinge again and do a concentration curl. Now I'm gonna concentrate a curl. I don't want my arm to do this and flare out. Keeping it underneath, curling here. Now I'll reset and I'll count as one. We're going to try about five here. All the 
while, whatever the rules and we're standing or earning present. Shoving your knees out, abs stay tight. Want to keep those things consistent. Avoid injuries. Master using the whole body all the time. That's how we get to our results. Two more for me. That's going to be good for today. One more. Rotate it through when I get back to the center. Of course, driving it to that center position. Wrist straight ahead. Knees in front. Curl. And we'll do that bent over. Concentration curl. Excellent. That's going to be another great circuit to finish a full body program like today. Just some stairs quite a bit, seven or eight steps. And then I finish with some upper body stuff. So, hopefully you enjoyed that. Remember to continually work your craft, work your trades. You can always think full body, you know, two to three times a week. And then add isolation programs on the other days if you're really looking to sculpt and stay functional. Thanks for tuning in. As this bonus for some people who couldn't catch the live earlier than the carry speed. So, until next time.